Okay, so first we're gonna start by cleaning our copper clad board. We need the rough side of our sponge, isopropyl alcohol and some kitchen towel. Always keep the lid on your alcohol or it'll evaporate really quickly and it's best to use rubber gloves to protect your hands. So in a circular motion using the rough side of the sponge, we're gonna clean the copper side of the board by rubbing on our alcohol. Once it's had a good clean, wipe the board down with some kitchen towel. It's really important to keep the board clean and free of fingerprints or grease, otherwise the print's unlikely to transfer properly. So we've got our clean board there, nice and shiny. So my iron's been heating up and I've got a towel ready to iron on. This is my print of the two circuits I want to transfer. I've kept this clean of fingerprints too. They really will mess it up. So place the print face down onto the board. Then take your hot iron and hold it still onto the print for a few seconds. This secures the print nicely in one place. Then you can go about rubbing down the edges with the very tip of your iron. Make sure you iron over the whole circuit, but be careful not to burn the paper. So after you've ironed on your prints and the board has cooled down nicely, pop it in some lukewarm water. This will help soak the pe paper so it's easy to peel off. I'd give it a good 15 minutes in there now. Once the water has started to soak through the paper, you can start rubbing over it with your sponge. Make sure not to tear the paper off too early. You're about ready to start peeling off the paper when you can see the track showing through. When you're ready, keep the board wet and start to peel the paper off slowly. Give it a rub to remove any last bits of paper. Don't worry, the transfer shouldn't rub off. Then you can check your tracks have all transferred well. There shouldn't be any breaks. If there are, you'll need to try again. When you're happy that your circuits have transferred well, Pop your board in a suitable container and pour over some ferric chloride. You really do need to be wearing rubber gloves at this point and be very careful because this acid is strong stuff and you don't want it on your skin, in your eyes or eating through your workbench. So take the smooth side of a sponge and slowly wipe over the edges of the board. As you wipe, eventually the copper will get stripped away leaving just a mustard looking board with the tracks you ironed on earlier. So I stripped all the copper off my board and then I cut it out with a Stanley knife. Now I'm gonna drill in the holes for my components. This way I have something to tie my cotton through when I dye the board. So there's my PCB with the holes drilled in. Now I'm going to clean off the toner from the print I transferred onto the board. I'm doing this again with the rough side of my sponge and some isopropyl alcohol. When all the toner has been removed, you should be left with some nice copper tracks.
To stain my PCBs, I used Dylon's machine washable fabric dye in intense violet. Pop that in a pan of boiling water along with some sea salt and give it a good stir. When you're choosing colours, bear in mind the pigment of your board to start with. This will obviously affect what colour your board turns out after you've dyed it. My boards, and I imagine most of yours, are a mustard colour. So after using the intense violet dye, I get these nice deep green coloured boards. So I've already tied some cotton onto my PCB through one of the holes I drilled. Now I just need to grab a stick. I use some dowel. And dip the board in and out of the dye. Again, make sure it's really clean before you start this step. The darkness of the PCB is determined by how long you dye it for and how much dye you use. So once you're happy with the colour of your PCB, you can give it a rinse under the tap, then a quick wipe over with some more alcohol. Use the smooth side of your sponge as we're only cleaning off those fingerprints again. When that looks nice and clean, you can dry it off with some paper towels. I've already prepared my tin solution, but if you've not done this yet, just pop your board down on a paper towel so it stays clean while you get yours ready. So you can see the copper tracks there that we're going to tin. I'll just pop my PCB in some Tupperware so I can close the lid while it's tinning. Then I can give my solution one last shake before I pour it over the board. As with all these processes, make sure you mix your solutions to the manufacturer's guidelines. This is really important as instructions will vary. So I'm just going to pour my solution over my PCB there and I'll leave that submerged for about 20 minutes or so. When that's done, we can give it a quick rinse under the tap and dry it off with some paper towels. And that's my straight edge distortion PCB. For more info and instructions, check out www.sonodrome.co.uk.